have today just 10 to 15 minutes to explain you about the labels that we're going to do today. And afterwards, we will ask you to ask, um, tell us what you want to do so we can um, record in our computer so we can split into groups that uh, do the same task so we yep. can help you all. And uh, yeah, for that, we now we start with what is, the la what is a label and um, then we explain you the code that you can use. And of course, we know that you may have a lot of questions by running the codes from the previous, the previous class. Time. But uh, today, this is also this time when we go with to you and we fix uh, the bugs or see if it you can run it again. And for this um, code for social media, now we have a new version and it's working pretty well. So if you were if you were facing some problems with that uh, today, we will start there solved already. So we we start. Okay, so uh, yeah, just like Carla did uh, said uh, that today is going to be very short, and uh, uh, regarding the labels, that first uh, we would like to show you the two pictures that we showed before. For example, these experiments of the mythological creatures, and this one that the raccoon detector. So uh, basically, uh, um, how these two experiments works is that you first ha uh, have a collection of pictures which could, could be arbitrary, and you label each picture either by, for example, in this case, by uh, the type of uh, creatures the picture represent, or in this case, the position of the raccoon in. So, uh, so basically, this, uh, this action of, of, of pointing where the... Uh, what to find or what, 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 what Yeah, pointing out uh, what this uh, picture uh, contains or where the things are in this picture. This action is called labeling. For example, then, uh, if we have a raccoon picture, then the labeling will be this... Rec the, the label of this picture will be this rectangle, right? And the, and the other step, of course, this step is is done by the computer that we don't actually care too much is how to represent this rectangle in a numerical way that in this case we record their x y coordinates and and the the, the task of computers will be predict this x y coordinates so that we can render the rectangles back on top of this picture yeah and for example if we only care whether this uh, picture contains a raccoon or not then for example we say this picture is raccoon. And then imagine if we have a, a classif classifier that, that, that need to tell us uh, what are the animals in the, in the picture is. For example, if we care about dog, cats, and raccoons, three animals, then for, uh, then for this picture, uh, the representation, the, the numerical representation will be that in, uh, will be a three-dimensional vector. And uh, for for the element that represent dogs and for the element that represent cats are both are both zero and the the last element last element which represent raccoon will be one. This is how uh, technically this uh, labeling works. But yeah, in principle, it's it's like uh, we have a picture and we have the labeling and we translate this labeling into numerical uh, representation. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, this previous task we. Uh, we call it localization because it focuses more on the size and the locations. And the second one, we call it classification that uh, it simply uh, focuses on what rather than uh, where. And uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, the second thing that we would like to introduce is called the pre-labeled data set that, for example, uh, <coughs> we do the labeling because we 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 are interested in some features that coming from these pictures, and for for many cases that there are already uh, that that other people also like uh, interested in the same thing, and in this case if they have already did something, we can uh, use their work rather than uh, do all the things by ourselves again, and. Uh, for example, uh, and, and th this is where the where the pre-labeled data comes from. For example, we can check uh, this data repository of of Mathematica. One more uh, thing is um, yeah. so we wanted just to let you know that there is uh, 
plenty of label data yep. that you can use to train your model. So uh, mainly each algorithm that is used for machine learning comes from this um, research, like a PhD thesis will, could be one algorithm, and then they make available all these data set, and you can just, by knowing what you want to find, or by knowing already the tasks you want to do, you could already yeah, select yeah. from those data yeah. databases that are available and uh, yeah. open source. Yeah. Yeah, for example, if we go to images in this repository and... Uh, and this, is, this is mathematical yeah. repository. So yeah. already Wolfram has a huge amount of data that you can use to train. Yeah. For example, if we go to this uh, computer, vi computer vision training data set called CIFAR10. Yeah. Yeah. For example, these are the. I think these these were the uh, one case that we showed before that the it, the aim of this data set it try is try to identify uh, common objects from the from the pictures like it, whether this images is about a aircraft or truck or car, something like that. And uh, another similar data set called this CIFR one hundred. Okay. Yeah. It it I, I, I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't take a very close look like uh, what's the, what exactly are the difference, but maybe for example the cat the, the type of uh, objects of these two data set are different. For example this one maybe focus more on I don't know uh, food or natural objects. That the previous one focused on artificial objects. But but, but yeah in here you have already a description. Yeah. yeah. And what is nice about this repository is that you can call it right away in your notebook of Mathematica. Yep. Just you say resource data, you type the name of the data, and then it shows you how it looks. Yep. And if I press this, OK. And for example, another cool data set is I found this one that it calls common object in context. So basically it's uh, it's rather similar than the previous two, but it, uh, but in this data set, the way how the images are labeled are, uh, there, are there are many ways, not just uh, one way. Uh, for example, uh, yeah, it also, it also has a web interface that allows you to look at it. For example, I search for all the docs from this data set and uh, come on, yeah. For example, these are the few results that are coming from this data set. Uh, the links, the, te uh, the text description uh, for this picture, that which can also be regarded as a kind of label. And uh, yeah, the object itself and the original picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are actually many of them. And of course, we can change to another one. And I don't you can know, add, bottle. so you can not only search for, for images that ha contain one object, yep. but you can just add a selection of things that you want to find, and yep. then you get. Hmm. This is slow. Yeah. For example, in another case, that a uh, different object in this picture, and of course, the text associated with this picture, where you can download <laughs> this picture, and so on. And for this data set, it is very clear that. It, it also gave us a clear uh, link that we can directly download. For example, here, uh, it's around uh, several gigabytes. If, if you wish, you can, oh shit. <laughs> no, 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 no. Clear. No, wait, wait, no. no. Because in Windows, it always asks if you would like to download, but here, <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, and the third one is like uh, uh, there are also some articles that talks about the most uh, imp uh, common data set. For example, this one it kind of lists all the public data source for 2018. For example, I, I found one which is very interesting called yeah. called uh, ah. no thanks. No thanks. 
What about the FBI, right? Yeah, for example. Yeah, for example, this FBI crime reporting. Then you can you can you can dig in this uh, digging in this website and find where you can download the data and so on. Yeah. And so, uh, what's the what's the link between uh, these data set and the data that you collect? Is that, for example, if the thing you are uh, focusing on uh, have been done by other people, for example, if you're focusing on cars or food, then probably these data set can help you to train your model so that you can uh, do your job more uh, easily. But in, I would say in most cases that what we are focusing on that uh, that are never been touched before by others. So in this case, we have no options but to label the data by ourselves manually. And uh, to do this, that uh, we kind of introduce you two tools that uh, implemented in Mathematica for us to do this in a, in a, in an easier way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the first tool is uh, yeah, a so labeling tool. So yeah. This is this labeling tool that. Um, that is classification that we that called at the beginning is a categorization so we could actually just by looking at the picture decide in this case do, do I like that or do I, do I, I don't like that or I don't care so yeah. these things you define what you would like to yeah, find in your pictures and uh, you can round it. Yeah. And I can show you just now how it works so it's like first, if you since for the uh, for this experiment you have to define the city that you want to work with. You first that type the name the, the name of the city here. Uh, you run the cell in order, and here is when you define the the title of your project. So in this case, I just said I would like to find the categories in New York, um, and then I say these are my three categories that I'm looking for, and here I this is just a toy example. So. It has no meaning and no, it's even no label consistency. So it has no consistency in the labeling. But you run it, and then in this part, by doing shift enter, it goes into this uh, labeler. And then you say, you start by saying, yeah, I don't like, I don't like, I like, I, li I don't care. Like, like things like this. So yeah. it's, um, wait, it has to do it until the end. You can just enter and enter, enter, enter. Yeah. Okay. So one thing which is important is here that in samples you say how many pictures you would like to label. So I just say ten. But since we are aiming to get a, a large training data, you just will type down as much as images as, we, as you would like to label. Yeah. So here, just to compare what we did, so we said in this case we say I don't like it's zero, I don't care it's, it's one, and I like it's two. So you, we will see it here. So I said this I don't like, this I don't like, then I like this, and then I, this I don't care, and then I like here. This this is just to visualize how you, you train your data. It is giving you only a random sample of five examples, and then for, uh, then it got it, it it creates a file in your folder where you Mathematica uh, file this. So in order to just uh, import this data, you run the second line, and again. This one in, that is in white, you can run it and see if it's loading correctly your labels. Um, yeah, and then we stop here. The rest is for the next class, but you can just give it a look. And this is how it works. First, you define your project here. Well, first, your city that you're working in, the project, the, how many images you would like to label, and then the categories you are, you are finding in these images. Can be three, can be two, can be, can be four. These things, uh, these you, you decide. Oh. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the second is regarding to the localization task. It's uh, it's it's actually it works very similarly with the one Carla shows. Uh, where's the Wait, finder? Code localize. Yeah, yeah, this one. Yeah. Double click. Double click. Okay. Yeah, so uh, basically it's, 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 it's always like the file that we did before that we give you a first a, list, a short introduction and then a few lines of code that you can run. 
But for example, in this case, uh, how do I exit? Ah, sorry. Okay. For example, in this case, that uh, uh, this yeah that uh, that uh, you always you always put uh, this mathematical file together with a folder called images, and in this folder you put your um, not all your data, but the part a part of your data. For example, if you have what. Uh, 10,000 images, maybe you put 1,000 images into this folder, and these images are those you are going to label. For example, here I put, uh, I randomly select uh, 13 street view images, just, uh, just like a, a demonstration, that first you put all your images into this folder, and then here, make it a little bigger. Here you define the, the things that you, you are interested in, for example, I'm interested in tree, for example, I am interested in building, building and I'm also interested in people, and I run this cell. If, if we ask if you would like to automatically evaluate all the in initialization, initialization cells, you always select yes, and then you run the second line, it gives you a, a a user interface that allows you to do this task. For example, I click twice on the screen, so it shows a bounding, a bounding box. Then I then I can say that this bounding box is a tree. Yeah, and then after it turns to turns into white, it kind of remember this label, and I can do it again for another tree, and I do it again for. A building. I just I just do this arbitrarily, so it's not so precise. And I can I can use clear all if I think this labeling is not is not correct. Or for example, I want to do it again. This is a tree. Yeah. If I think this is proper, then I select save and next. Yeah. Then I go to next picture. I do the same. For example, this is a building. Yeah. This is a this is a tree. And I think this is proper, so I go to next. And uh, yeah, you do these similar things to all the pictures. And if, for example, this picture does not contain anything, then I don't do any labeling. I just simply click next. Yeah, next, 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 next. Yeah, for example, here is the building. But there's none, but I just do, like, do this randomly. Yeah, next, next, next. Until the end, that a message box tells you that all the images have labeled. Yeah. so. After that, you can execute this line of code that uh, export your result into a JSON file. In, in this case, it calls uh, labels.json. And this file always, always uh, present in the same place that uh, this uh, mathematical file locates. For example, here is the mathematical file, and this is the uh, label result that it generates. And uh, you can you can review your uh, you can review review your result by this uh, label viewer just in case that you you are not sure if you do everything you, if you did everything correct for example here i say the file make this bigger the file that uh, saved my that contains my labeling result is this called labels.json so i type labels.json here and then execute this cell and after that, I execute the second one. And it gives me a user interface again that allows me to check. For example, this, the first one, I label a tree here. Yeah. The, the second one, I label two objects. And the third one, I didn't do anything, and so on, and so on, and so on. Yeah, this one, I did a randomly labeling. Yeah. So this is basically how uh, this labeler works. And uh, uh, one thing we would like to uh, mention is that, for example, uh, in principle, you will have to label many pictures, for example, thousands or uh, several thousands, which will be a lot for one person. So in this case, we recommend you to do this, like you to separate this task into team, team members and everyone do a part of it. 
And to do this, I just I'm going to show you how, in principle, how you did it, um, how you, how you are going to do is uh, in this computer, and then you kind of know. For example, I, uh, for example, say me and Carla. For example, uh, this folder, I say this is my job, and this folder is is Carla's job, right? Then I copy my labeler, oh sorry. Then I copy my labeler to, inside, inside. to my computer, right? And I goes to e these images, I took the I took the first five images as as the part of my job. I copied them and I create in, in my computer I create a same fo a same a folder called images, and I copy these images into my computer. And I did, and Carla did the same thing, except she copied the second uh, eight images into her computer, right? And then I run this labeler in my computer, and uh, yeah, did the same thing. Oops, something's wrong. Yeah, because I have. I have many windows. Close. I close this. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. So in this case, in this case, this uh, user interface only shows the five uh, images that I copied. Then I just did the labeling. Yeah. After five images, it's okay, and uh, I export it, just like I did before. Then I close my labeler. Then, in my computer, there's a label.json uh, exists here. So, Carla did the same thing. So she will have another labels.json as well. And uh, the important thing is that you always uh, keep these JSON files safe because these are the files that are going to be used in the next step. And uh, in principle, you can rename these files arbitrarily. For example, this is goals label. And Carla named this file as, for example, Carla's label. And then later, we will put all our uh, labels together, for example, uh, into this folder called teamwork. This is my label. I copy it again. I just say that this is uh, Carla's label. Then I have, for example, in this case, I have uh, all, the t uh, all the work from my teammates together. Then. I go back to this uh, labeler, and uh, in the last section, which th this section is actually independent with the previous one, that for example, uh, which uh, merge all the files together. Yeah, for example, in this case, it is it knows that I have both my labels and Carla's label together. I then I run the second cell. It will merge the two results into one uh, uh, JSON file called. Uh, called team label.json which then can be used together with this with all the images you have as the training data and yeah that's basically how this works yeah yeah and uh, i guess that, yeah, that that's is. it from our site mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah the, almost the same processes for this uh, classifi classifier model mm -hmm. but you just need to have the um, all instead of JSON file, it has the extension of point yeah. .mm. So just uh, put all your all your training data in, in uh, close to your category in Mathematica files. So in in that you you will always link them when you run your code. Um, but no, don't worry. We will come to you and then we will do it together. So then you don't have any problem with that. Um, one. The, the, so this is all, but we want you now is we will call your name and then you will tell us what you're doing so we can record and then split you in groups so we can help uh, all the ones that are doing the same task, okay? Yep.